Hi there. Welcome to this time that we get to spend together in the Word of God. We're in Psalm 8 today. I'm really struggling because I want to go through the whole psalm, but to go through the whole psalm will take a lot more time than perhaps uh, you and I want to invest in a, a short devotional video like this. So I don't know how far I'm going to go. I might just stop with uh, the first part of verse 1 and hit verse 9 again, but I do want to read the whole thing so that you get a sense of what's going on and have you follow along with me. So hopefully you have your Bibles open as we study God's Word together. And, and to rightly study the Word of God, we need to pray to the God of the Word. So let's pray. God, you are glorious. You are perfect. You're powerful. You're loving and kind and righteous and true. And your word, your word is truth. Help us to trust and believe and sit under the powerful influence of your inspired, infallible, and inerrant word. Holy Spirit, guide us in our thinking, shape our understanding, clear confusion, and cast out the enemy that we might hear your word, believe it, and be changed by it, and may our lives be guided and shaped around your word. I pray, Lord, now in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 8, Psalm of David. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. That's the phrase, that's the, the part that I want to hone in on with us today is, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. That refrain bookends the entirety of the psalm. And we'll look at, maybe in the next few days, the the contents and the details of this psalm. But in particular, David is emphasizing the majesty of God. Now, what is the majesty of God? Now, generally, the word majesty is referred, uh, used for uh, as a term of reference for those that are royal. You know, you, you have a hearing before the queen, you get invited into her presence, and you might refer to her as her majesty. Or the king, his majesty. M majesty is equated with royalty. And, and majesty for in relation to God is a term that, that points to God's disclosed, that is revealed, and God's displayed character. David's essentially saying, when we look at the universe, and we look at ourselves... There is an sense in which all that is created is an expression of the character of God. I, I have struggled to find the source of this, but I, I do recall early on in my Christian faith, particularly as I was immersing myself in the study of apologetics. This is these. This is the arguments and the the truthfulness and the way in which to persuade others of the the veracity, the, the possibility, and the truthfulness of the gospel. 
the reality that God exists, the truthfulness of scripture, sin in the world, on and on and on and on and on. And one time uh, I ran across the claim that if, if we did not have scripture, now God is masterful that he reveals himself in creation and he reveals himself in scripture and he reveals himself most gloriously in his son, Jesus Christ. But what is it that we could know about God if all we had were the universe to look at? Well, well one, if God is the creator of the universe, we look at the universe and we realize that it's it's immense. So there's this sense in which the immensity and the enormity of the creation points to the immensity and the enormity, the eternality of God. Well, there's also things in the creation that are incredibly powerful. The explosion of volcanoes, the, the thundering crash of waves on the shore, the, the clap of reverberating and rumbles of thunder. What would we look at and see there? We would see that God, as the creator, that points to God as all-powerful. We look at the intricacy and the uh, the e the details of the creation, and we see that if the creation is expression of a expressive of a creator, then there is intelligence in the creator. The creator is intelligent to be able to create the the refinement of you know like the human eye and how its muscles work to open and close the iris and focus in on and process what it sees. We would also see that the, the creation points to a creator who is benevolent, who is giving. The creation produces uh, nourishment and supplies living things with its food and its water and its protection. See, we could look at the creation, and if we have eyes to see and to really ponder, the, the creation points to the creator. Paul, again, in Romans 1, identifies this. And so David, enamored and enraptured by the creation and the creator, David sings, O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Not only are you revealed by being, being disclosed and displayed in the creation, in your character. But I rejoice. I rejoice in you, oh God. And, and so today, you know, we go through the hustle and bustle of our lives, especially if we live in a, in a metro area that's got a lot of activity. But even if we live in the country, it doesn't matter. We can still be so caught up in the the rapid pace of life and yet we don't take the the scripture's invitation to be still and know that I am God and when we're still and we ponder and we allow our eyes to see and look up the stars in the heaven or look down at the blades of grass or to behold the the flight and the the intricacy of uh, a, a flying insect or the trajectory of a particle of dust floating through the sunbeam coming in through our window, or to look at the palms of our hands and see the, the uniqueness of the fingerprints that we bear, or to behold the image of God in people around us. Today, when we are able to see in the creation evidence of a creator, it humbles us, it beckons us, it inspires us to seek and to savor God Almighty. It causes us to worship. And that's what David is doing here. He's worshiping. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. I revere you. I love you. I celebrate you. I humble myself before you today. I know we have demands on us and we have deadlines and bills to pay and places to go and shopping to do. I, I understand the, the myriad upon myriad of things that tug and pull at us. But today, with eyes to see and hearts open to the living God, behold the majesty of God. That what we see is expressive of God and his character, and his majesty. Let's pray. God, grant us eyes to see. 
hearts to believe, minds to be informed and ponder you, and lives to be lived for your glory. I pray, Jesus, in your mighty name. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. I'll see you again tomorrow.